name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one who crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the staff of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Today is December 13th, the third Sunday of Advent. I'm going to share with you a short reflection on the Gospel passage of today, John chapter 1, 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. However, I'll bring, begin my reflection from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Greek word for the Word is Logos. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Gospel begins with beautiful poetic words about Jesus. Poetry that does not mention Jesus' name, but rather uses metaphors simple enough for a child and rich enough for all of us to reflect on. In the first of these metaphors, John refers to Jesus as Word, Logos. To understand his meaning, we need to look back to the Old Testament which uses the Hebrew word Dabar to speak about the Word of God. A message from God to humans, whether a command, reprimand or announcement, sometimes spoken through the agency of a prophet, but at other times spoken directly from God to the person of concern, this word was used. The Gospel of John, however, uses the Greek word logos in much the same way. The word is eternal, present with God, the Father, from the very beginning, participating fully in the creation process. God now sends this word into the world as God's ultimate revelation of himself. If we want to know God, we can see him in the face of Jesus. If we want to know how God would have us live, we only need to read the Gospels. There we would see the perfect example of a godly life. If we, however, want to know something of God's grace, we need to only look at the logos on the cross. 
And if we want any assurance of our future, we need to only look at the empty tomb. We see a number of metaphors for Jesus in this gospel. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, I'm the light of the world, I'm the door, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the resurrection and the life, I am the way, the truth and the life, I am the true wine. At verse 6, the gospel today, the beginning of today's gospel, the subject shifts to John the Baptist, whom the evangelist only identifies as John. The explicit words regarding John's status makes it clear that great though he might be because the entire countryside came to visit him and to listen to him, he, John, is the lesser when compared to Jesus the greater. John the Baptist, as John presents in his gospel, has this only job to testify to the word Logos. We have the first mention of Jesus' name which is paired with this title, Jesus the name and Christ the title which means the anointed one, which is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word Messiah. John came as a witness, the gospel tells us, that he might testify about the light. The words witness and testify are commonly used in legal settings and are powerful words. In a courtroom, witnesses help to establish guilt or innocence by their testimony. Their purpose is to witness to that of which they have a personal knowledge. It is hard to overstate the importance of these words, witness and testimony in this gospel. John witnesses what he has seen and heard and experienced and testifies about Jesus so that all might believe through him. This is the purpose of John's testimony. Belief is the purpose not only for John's testimony but for this gospel itself. In its closing verses, if you like, you know, run through the pages and hit the last verse of the Gospel of John, it ends saying, Therefore, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. One of the purposes of the passage of today's gospel for our liturgy makes it clear that John is not, he is not the light, he is not the Messiah, he is not Elijah by his own admittance, he is not the prophet, he is not worthy to untie the strap of his Messiah's sandal. John takes no chance of being misunderstood. John knows that he is present only to witness Christ. Jesus is the main character. John the Baptist has only a supporting role. This models appropriate behavior for all of us who proclaim the good news of Christ today as Christians and as his disciples. Our purpose is not to draw attention to ourselves, but to point to the Christ People from Judea, Jerusalem and all of Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to John, including the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But John, famous as he got, never forgot that he was sent by God with a mission to point to Christ. Advent is a time when we point to the manger, to the Christ child that's born to save this world. John lived his life in pursuit of that mission. We too are called to live our lives working by witnessing and testifying to Christ who is our Saviour and Redeemer. We who have been called by God in modern times must emulate John, John the Baptist, in his focus and his faithfulness. Advent 
and Christmas is around the corner. You and I must witness and testify to Jesus. God bless you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Christ